Here is a numerical problem based on the falling head test that we had discussed in the previous video. In a falling head test, on a sample 12.2 cm high and 44.41 cm square in cross section, the water level in the standpipe of 6.25 mm internal diameter dropped from a height of 75 cm to 24.7 cm in 15 seconds. You are asked to find the coefficient of permeability. Now this is a falling head test and the equation for coefficient of permeability is here. K is equal to 2.303 Al by 80 log H1 by H2 where A small editor is the area of the standpipe for which you are given with the internal diameter. Capital A is a cross-sectional area of the sample directly given as 44.41 cm square. Length is the length of travel of water through the sample. T is the time taken for height to fall from H1 to H2. So first we need to get small letter A which is equal to pi by 4 d square d the diameter is given as 6.25 millimeters so converting that to centimeters you can substitute in this equation length of flow or length of travel of water through the sample is nothing but 12.2 centimeters which is the height of the sample area of cross section capital a is 44.4 centimeter square and time taken is given us 15 minutes so we can convert that to seconds multiplied by 60 height dropped from 75 centimeters h175 centimeters to 24.7 centimeters so h2 is 24.7 now we have all the data all you have to do is to substitute in this equation making sure that you have the consistent units you have converted millimeters to centimeters here and you've converted time from minutes to second so substituting will give you answer in centimeters per second coefficient of permeability 1.04 into 10 to the power minus 4 centimeters per second Next question, a sand sample of 25 cm length was subjected to a constant head permeability test in a permeometer having an area of 30 cm square. A discharge of 100 cc was obtained in a period of 1 minute under a head of 39 cm you are asked to determine the coefficient of permeability. So of course it's given as constant head permeability test and we have the relation for coefficient of permeability K as QL by AH where Q is a discharge in centimeter per second, L is a length of flow in centimeters, A is a cross-sectional area in centimeter square and H is a head causing flow in centimeters. So 100 cc in one minute, 100 cc in 60 second. So that's 100 by 60 centimeter per second. That will be the discharge. Length of flow is already given as 25 centimeters, which is nothing but the length taken by the water particle through the sample or the length of travel of water 25 centimeters capital A is a cross-sectional area of the permeometer or in short the sample which is 30 centimeters square already given H head causing flow is already given as 39 centimeters so all you have to do is to substitute making sure that you have a consistent set of units here centimeters and seconds so 100 by 60 multiplied by 25 by 30 multiplied by 39 answer turns out to be around 0 0.0356 centimeters per second so that's a coefficient of permeability 
Now we'll move to one final portion in the second module, which is the permeability of stratified deposits. Now soil doesn't exist in an ideal condition. In field, soil exists in different layers like this. So whenever you take a cross section of the ground, it will be in layers of different soil. So though we have uh, we have different assumptions made for theory. For example, soil is homogeneous, soil is isotropic, soil is semi-infinite. These are certain assumptions that we use to formulate basic equations and relations. But in actual practice, soil is not homogeneous, is not isotropic, is not semi-infinite. Soil is heterogeneous fundamentally and soil is not isotropic as well. So it exists in layers so soil with different layers will have different permeability and they are arranged in strata as observed in nature, the one that you see in the photograph here. So in such cases, the average effective permeability is to be found out by the engineer to approximately get the engineering parameters that will help him in different conditions. Now, when we talk about the stratified deposits, we need two cases. Case number one is a flow parallel to the plane of stratification and case number two is perpendicular to the plane of stratification. Now we'll take up each case. Case number one, the flow is parallel to the plane of stratification. For simplicity, I have two layers here, layer number one and layer number two. Now layer number one has a height of h1 and layer number two has a height of h2 making the total height h now discharge through layer 1 parallel to the plane of stratification which is x-axis is q1 and discharge through layer 2 parallel to the plane of stratification is q2 so the total discharge through the cross section are the total discharge through the height h is q. Assume that you have one unit perpendicular to the screen that you see. Now the length between two points that I've chosen here, 1 and 2, is L. So this picture is here and for the flow parallel to the plane of stratification we have considered two points 1 and 2 which are separated at a distance L capital L along the line of flow direction so this horizontal is a line of flow direction and length L is a distance that separates point number 1 and point number 2 now the hydraulic head at point number 2 will be less than the hydraulic head at point number one. As you can see from this picture, the hydraulic head here is higher and at two you have a lower hydraulic head. Now the point one, if you take two layers whose thicknesses are H1 and H2, they will have the same head. So at point one, each layer will have the same head. And at point 2 also, both these layers will have the same head, but different from that of point 1. So this is a key point. Hence, the hydraulic gradient I of each layer is equal. And again, equal to the entire deposit. So I, hydraulic head or hydraulic gradient, is equal to I1 is equal to I2 but the discharge Q as you can see from this picture is the sum of discharges Q1 and Q2 so Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2 whereas I hydraulic gradient for, for, for points 1 and 2 will be equal again equal to the general hydraulic gradient I so based on these two things q1 plus q2 equal to q we can rearrange that as kia 
equal to k1 i1 a1 plus k2 i2 a2 q is equal to k i a as per Darcy's law. But in this equation, we know that i is equal to i1 is equal to i2, which we had discussed in the previous slide. Hydraulic gradients are constant. So what remains is k a equal to k1 a1 plus k2 a2. But a can be replaced by h because we have taken one unit perpendicular to this slide that you see. So I can write this as k multiplied by h1 plus h2 is equal to k1 h1 plus k2 h2 where h1 plus h2 is equal to h. So in short, I have an equation for k as k1 h1 plus k2 h2 by h1 plus h2 k equal to k1 h1 plus k2 h2 by h1 plus h2 when the flow is parallel to the plane of stratification or the overall hydraulic permeability coefficient is equal to k1 h1 plus k2 h2 by h1 plus h2 where h1 and h2 are the heights of each layers in k1 and k2 are the coefficients of permeability for each layers. Now you have the second case that is the flow perpendicular to the plane of stratification. Now when you have the flow perpendicular to the plane of stratification, the total discharge Q will be equal to Q2 will be equal to Q1 because the flow is perpendicular to the plane of stratification which means the water moves perpendicular to the plane in this vertical direction as you see in the slide. So the total height h will be equal to h1 plus h2 and the total discharge q will be equal to q1 will again be equal to q2 like this. So the coefficient of permeability k is represented like this k equal to h by h1 by k1 plus h2 by k2 where k1 and k2 are the coefficients of permeabilities for layer 1 and layer 2 and h1 and h2 are the heights or the thicknesses. So these two things flow perpendicular to the plane of stratification and flow parallel to the plane of stratification are quite analogous to perhaps the resistance in series and resistance in parallel that you have probably studied in your in your school physics. A question a horizontal stratified solid deposit consists of three layers, each uniform in itself. The permeabilities of the layers are given as 4, 10 to the power of minus 4, 25, 10 to the power of minus 4, and 7.5, 10 to the power of minus 4 millimeters per second. Their thicknesses are 6, 3, and 12 meters respectively. You are asked to find the average permeability on the horizontal and vertical directions separately. So figure looks like this. You have the first layer 6 meter thickness, second layer 3 meter thickness, third layer 12 meter thickness, H1, H2 and H3. So the total thickness H will be equal to 12 plus 3 plus 6, layer 1, layer 2, layer 3. Each of these are given with the permeabilities. 4, 25 and 7.5 into 10 to the power minus 4 millimeter per second. First one, the average permeability in horizontal direction or parallel to the plane of stratification. K will be equal to K1 H1 plus K2 H2 plus K3 H3 by H1 plus H2 plus H3. K1, K2, K3 are given, H1, H2, H3 are given. So you just have to substitute in this equation and the value that you get will be 9 into 10 to the power of minus 4 millimeters per second. Like I used to say in every classes, you just please do not by heart what's written here. All you have to do is just work out on your own and ensure that you are getting a similar answer. Now the second thing is the average permeability in the vertical direction which means parallel to the plane of stratification. So the equation is K equal to H 
by h1 by k1 plus h2 by k2 plus h3 by k3. Again, try to work this on, on your own and just try to see if you are getting an answer like 6.5 into 10 to the power of minus 4 millimeters per second.